Hello, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, today is November 9th, and this is the EU US edition. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, right now, uh, we have myself, Mark Waite, and Bruno Verachten. Um, if others come, we'll join and welcome. Uh, thanks to the daylight savings time changeover for both Europe and US. This is a little earlier than it has been lately. So uh, if anyone's late, no worries. Uh, so for the agenda today, uh, the Jenkins 2 plus 2 plus 2 Java support plan, uh, the blog post that Basel, Basel wrote, so uh, just highlighting that. Uh, we'll touch on the Google Summer of Code 2024 prep, uh, the contributor spotlight project that we've been working on, and we'll, find, we'll shed some light on that. Uh, the October newsletter has been merged, but it's not uh, displaying on blog yet, just yet. Uh, next week, we'll have... Uh, the next LTS baseline 2.426.1 will be released. Uh, October 2020, Hectoberfest 2023 has come to an end. Uh, and lastly, on the agenda, I have uh, some time and designation to talk about the update CLI. Um, we've got, one of the pull requests was merged just the other day, and then there is another uh, idea that we've been discussing that we can talk about as well. Uh, anything else that needs to go on the agenda for today, or does that cover topics for everyone? Well covered for me. Thank you very much. So uh, starting off, so the Jenkins 2 plus 2 plus uh, 2 plus 2 plus 2 support plan. Uh, so this is something we've been discussing for a little uh, while now. Uh, Basil Crow's written up this lovely blog post. Thanks again to him. Uh, but uh, this goes through and explains the uh, idea concept, uh, potential proposals that we had dis um, discussed, and the accepted proposal that we're going with. Um, again, this has all been discussed prior, but essentially the idea is that um, we want to uh, enable and empower both enterprise and uh, developer uh, user bases. So uh, really large scale and really small scale. We want to make sure that developers can develop and adapt quickly, fastly, and get the latest tools. Um, but we also don't want to disrupt an uh, enterprise set of users with uh, changes that they may not be ready for or even able to make at that point in time. So we've come up with an idea that we think will please everyone. Uh, granted, you can't please everyone, but for the most part, this does address a lot of the concerns that have been shared thus far and gives a very clear uh, explanation and idea as to what Jenkins will be able to support in the future. Uh, the idea is that we'll have uh, the supported version uh, for two years. We'll introduce the next version uh, when that uh, first version becomes required. So then we'll have the next version supporting for two years where uh, the first version is required. Uh, and then in the last two years of the first version's life, uh, we'll require the second version and introduce the third version uh, as we start to support that. Um, so uh, a little, <laughs> I could have described that a little bit more clearly, but uh, Basil's got great images in the blog post that do a really lovely job of explaining what I just said. Um, it's also got some key dates, some ideas, uh, of what to look out for, uh, and just really generally a nice presentation of what we've been discussing uh, throughout the community uh, in, in uh, the Jenkins enhancement proposal that has been submitted. Um, that link is here. Uh, there is an ongoing discussion about concerns, issues, anything that anyone might have regarding this. Uh, please, by all means, chime in here, uh, add your thoughts. This is something that's really important. We want to have as much consideration as we can going into it. Um, again, this is not a complete solution for everyone, uh, but we've come to a, a decision that really does work for the majority of folks. So I'm um, really happy with that, all of that and all the community participation. Uh, next up, so Google Summer of Code 2024 is in uh, preparation mode. Chris Stern has stepped up and is going to be leading the GSOC project next year. Really amazing. Thanks to Chris for uh, taking on that role. Uh, the initial documentation to organize the event itself is being generated and submitted now. Uh, I know Chris has submitted some updates for the uh, documentation on Jenkins.io, so uh, that is actively being worked on. Uh, they're collecting ideas, recruiting mentors, normal GSOC prep. And uh, if we have any documentation ideas for next year, they're willing to consider that as well. Uh, and of course, uh, not doing this alone, this is done with the help of the organize, additional uh, organization, Bruno, thank you, uh, Alyssa Tong and Jean-Marc Messin. 
So uh, as always, thanks to everyone for their work and dedication to Google Summer of Code. Uh, next up on the agenda, uh, this is something that I've mentioned previously. I don't think we've gone too in depth on, but um, this is something that we've been working on uh, is the contributor spotlight. Uh, so the idea is that we want to acknowledge the really hard work that goes into keeping Jenkins afloat and working and operating the way it does. The contributors that are heavily involved in Jenkins well-being and health. Uh, we want to really give them a chance to shine, highlight, and appreciate what they're doing and what they've been doing for uh, quite some time now. Uh, so with the help of the advocacy and outreach organization and uh, a lot of the other uh, SIG leaders, uh, what we've been doing is determining who the top contributors are or the heavier contributors to Jenkins are, uh, and then reaching out to them with a questionnaire to understand who they are as people understand what their backgrounds are, why they cho choose Jenkins, uh, why why Jenkins has helped them, how has Jenkins helped them. Um, the idea is we want to showcase and highlight all of the hard work that goes into Jenkins and the people that are making it work. So uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a new contributor spotlight uh, site that Chris Stern has been working on. And a uh, big, big thanks to Chris for all of his help with generating the site. Um, thanks to Christina Pizzagalli for providing the mock-up of the site. Uh, and again, uh, all the contributors that have uh, helped with this. So we're gonna be publishing this and, make, and uh, getting this live once it's ready. We're working with the infrastructure team right now to get that, uh, that new repository integrated into the infrastructure. And what's gonna happen is uh, we'll have a new, pub, uh, new contributor spotlight Every week or two, uh, there's going to be a regular cadence that these are going to be published, and we'll be able to highlight these people, uh, these contributors, and actually let them tell you who they are uh, and why they love Jenkins, why they contribute to Jenkins, and what Jenkins has done for them over the years. Um, and it's really great because we get contributors from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds, um, and all different experiences. So just seeing some of the similarities and some of the differences is really nice and eye-opening. Uh, at this point in time, we've got about 10 responses, so we have enough material that we'll be publishing for some time. We're still work I'm still working with other contributors at this point as well. Um, we've done question written questionnaires, we've done interviews. Um, we're here to work with the contributors, so uh, whatever makes them happy is, is good enough for me. But um, that is something that we've been working on and that will be being, uh, that will be come uh, real and live uh, sooner and later. So really excited and looking forward to getting those published. Uh, next up on the agenda. So we have uh, the version documentation site for Jenkins.io. This is something that uh, Vandy and Chris Theron have been working on since Google Summer of Code. Um, they've made a lot of work. They're uh, getting to a really great point where uh, the site's almost ready. And so they're looking to hopefully have this done by the end of November. So that's prior to holidays in India where uh, Vandi is based. And so Chris and Vandi are working towards that. Uh, they also have, um, I think I, they have a prototype site and, and these are all available as well to see. Yeah, um, so the link is here on the agenda. So uh, you can just, you can see how much work they've done thus far. It's great, I'm really excited for it. Um, yeah, kudos to them for all of their work on this thus far. Uh, next up, so we did, we have the monthly newsletter uh, that has been merged as of 20 minutes ago, uh, or a little bit more than that. So it's not live on the site just yet, but that will be thanks to all of the SIG leaders for their uh, constant participation and contributions to that. Um, you'll get to see our, our uh, victories and our achievements in, uh, just a little bit. Um, Uh, next on the agenda, so uh, the LTS release again next week is our next belt baseline release. So uh, LTS 2.426.1, uh, that'll be November 15th, 2023. Uh, the pull request for the change log and upgrade guide is available here. Um, that has been getting feedback and suggestions. I've been working on that with Mark to get that up to date and make sure that everything's included uh, as much as possible. Uh, it does need 
to get an additional update for uh, oh the snake yaml plugin. Okay. Uh, and Mark, I saw you were just adding this. So uh, was there anything to note on that or was it just a late backport that we need to make sure is in there? Yeah, so so the story there is that uh, some security scanners make the mistaken assumption that if a dependency is included in Jenkins, Jenkins and that dependency has any vulnerability, it must be reported and flagged. And then we get these bug reports to Jenkins.io saying, oh, there's a security issue in such and such. Uh, we spend, we waste a bunch of time telling people, please read our policy about security. Uh, this is just a simple way to avoid some of those complaints. Hey, this plugin is already available separately. It's been available for two months. Uh, many, many users are using it and it's running quite well. This is just a way to silence the security scanners. Okay. And yeah, Great. so we, we, in terms of, you'll need to add a change log entry for it. There wasn't a change log entry added in weekly because it's not actually a user visible change, right? Users won't detect that change. But I agree with Daniel Beck that anytime we do a backport, it needs a change log entry, even if there wasn't a change log entry for it in the weekly that included it. I'll make sure that that's included in the change log as well. Uh, it seems like there's plenty of reason why it should be there, like you said. Uh, so yeah, that's fantastic. And um, I know there was a couple other changes that were not user visible that we did actually have to remove because I'd included them. So uh, it's nice to see the other side of this. Thank you. Appreciate that, Mark. And uh, yeah, and just so everyone's aware, the release checklist is in progress for the release. Um, this is something that we have for every uh, LTS release. So uh, this is always available, you can check it here, um, but everything that's being done is being tracked as well. So um, thanks for including that, Mark. I, uh, I forget to put that up here sometimes. Uh, next up on the agenda. So again, we are in November now. So Hacktoberfest 2023 has completed. Um, we reported on this last week, but just again this week. So uh, for total number of pull requests created, there was uh, 1,029. Total number of Hacktoberfest PRs was 415. Uh, number of Hacktoberfest submitters was 81. Uh, the number of validated Hacktoberfest pull requests was 356. Uh, and the validated submitters was, number, was 68. So uh, there is a trend you can see here in the numbers. It is down from last year. Uh, this was felt across multiple projects, however, so it's not unique to Jenkins in that sense. Um, the plus side of that is that uh, the spam rate was that much lower this year as well, which made everyone else's lives easier, not having to worry about that spam coming through, not having to worry about junk pull requests or any kind of uh, noise, basically. Um, so while there was a dip in participation, everything went really well. The work we got was fantastic, and the participation and contribute contributors that uh, put in work during Hacktoberfest are greatly appreciated. And yeah, just thank you so much to everyone who participated in uh, got something out of Hacktoberfest, whether it was a tree digital badge or um, just a sense of accomplishment. Uh, and yeah, and Chris uh, Stern reported that he had a great experience. Mark, you look to have said the same. So um, any closing remarks for Hacktoberfest or any other thoughts that you want to share on that? Okay. Right. Oh, another, no other items. Okay. Uh, and so last on the agenda I had for today was um, the ongoing update CLI discussion. So uh, we had talked last week, Bruno, about um, just having the log being merged. So that's now been merged. So we have that. Um, and then uh, I know that we had talked before that there uh, this other pull request uh, had been, yeah. well, it's in draft mode, so it's not necessarily yes. open, but. Yeah, it's still in draft mode, I guess. It's a follow-up to the one that just got merged, but uh, I now have some merge conflicts I have to sort out before uh, putting it up for review. Uh, the thing is, hmm, we are... Um, I had made a previous PR a few weeks or months ago regarding um, using update CLI in order to have the right version of the Jenkins LCS in different parts of the documentation up to date. And I was very bold and I removed a Ruby script that was used up to now in um, to generate these pages. 
Um, so we had uh, an error and I had to revert some parts of that. So now I'm keeping the Ruby script just in case, but <laughs> I think I replaced just um, in every uh, part where it was needed. So now it should work um, quite well. And if not, we can always open a new PR and correct. Mark, I think you were kind of puzzled yesterday because you saw that I was replacing some keywords that were used by the Ruby script. And that's because we keep the Ruby script that I hope we won't use it <laughs> anymore. Um, I think I saw one of two PRs yesterday regarding the update of the Jenkins LTS in the documentation. Um, I don't know if they've been merged or not. No, I'm pretty sure they have not been merged. So that was when I needed. So what, what the, obviously I wasn't paying enough attention when I merged the pull request, I merged the pull request, the previous pull request, Kevin, the one that, um, was not draft. Uh, and yes, this one. Uh, when I saw that it said, yeah, exactly. When I saw that it said that we rely on a Ruby script, I mistakenly assumed that that Ruby oh, script was continuing, but it is in fact mm -hmm. not. So what this My does, not, not, not your fault. I didn't read it well, um, but it does a keyword replacement. However, how does it survive then after the keyword has been replaced the first time? Because the keyword is no longer there now. Uh, yeah, so the Ruby script won't work anymore, but just in case we wanted to revert my PR, it would work again, I guess. No, no, yeah, no, my question wasn't wasn't how the Ruby script will work. It's how oh. will the update CLI script work? Now oh, it's not that... looking for those keywords. It's uh, looking for the words, the, the word that are around <clears throat> uh, this part. So I'm just looking ah. for um, something before something that looks like a version and something after something that looks like a version and then it makes its magic with um how is it called uh, regular expressions of course we do love them when they work <laughs> so that's the way it works and of course that makes the ruby script um useless right okay so then then what that says is kevin we do need to merge the one that i had put a put a a, a question on that changes the uh where is it we'll have maybe this is it i yes. think this is it yeah yeah this is it so so this one is the one that we need to just remove my my objections merge it and the, this will give us the experiment experience to see does the update cli do what we expect and if not bruno mm -hmm. bruno can work to resolve it yeah so we'll. kevin if oh, you'll sure. click that refresh over on the right hand side yeah that way mm -hmm. thanks and then i can because if ultimately this the benefit this gives us is now the version number is literally inside the source file instead of a placeholder and that means that when we go to version documentation in in the future thanks to the google summer of code work and chris stern's work these numbers will be expressed exactly there rather than as placeholders so so build time content generation would be removed for this case and instead replaced by take the content straight from source control yes you're right we still have some problems though because um i had made the first pr that gives a general message about uh, let's move um you know let's bump uh, the Jenkins version image on various parts of the documentation. But the thing is, it is also changing the version of the BOM. And the one that is still in draft will address that. We'll have two separate PRs, one for the Jenkins LTS versions and one for the BOM versions. So maintainers of this repo will have a clearer idea on what is this PR trying to do, except um, it will change from a more global message that was misleading. Yeah, that's why I was trying to <laughs> explain. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so this would go another step in making sure that those updates are more clear when they're actually being generated in the, from the PRs, basically. Yeah. Um, so then, Mark, is there anything else that we need to do here or? 
just removing your um, changes is enough in this case. Yeah, just marking it for you. You're requesting my review is good enough. Okay, cool. Thank Perfect. you. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Bruno. You're welcome. And thank you, and thank you, Mark, for helping uh, clarify that a bit. So uh, that covers everything that I had on the agenda. Is there anything else that anyone would want to add or discuss today? Not on my side. Nothing for me. Okay, great. Uh, so then we'll go ahead and call it there. Uh, recording will be available 24 to 48 hours. Uh, and always, thank you for joining. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and we'll see you next week. Take care until then. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.